Hey everyone, Rob B here with Rob D. And you know what? Property is full of numbers. And the theory of those numbers is good. But you know what's better than theory? A real deal. Oh yeah, today we are taking you way beyond the theory and looking at the actual numbers behind a deal that we have done. So you can see exactly how it all fits together. So the lovely property that we'll be breaking down the numbers on today is based in Liverpool. As you can see from the image, this development sits on the waterfront and it's on the edge of the city centre. You can walk into all the places you need to be, including train stations, shops, restaurants and all that other fun stuff. So that's the property in question. Let's run through the numbers to see how much, first of all, this property cost to purchase. So the purchase price of this property was £156,000. But that doesn't mean that our team member who bought this property actually had to put in all £156,000 because he used a mortgage. So he took out a mortgage, as is fairly typical for 75% of the property's value, which is £117,000, leaving him to put in the deposit of £39,000. So that deposit, again, as is fairly typical, was his biggest cost in this purchase. But as we'll find out, that was far from the only cost in this purchase. Another big cost is the stamp duty. Stamp duty is not something you can get away from. And in fact, if you are buying a property investment and it's your second property and it isn't your first property, then you will have to pay a 3% surcharge. So if you don't own any other property, then you don't have to pay that. But as soon as you buy a second property, stamp duty is 3% on top of the normal rate. So on this purchase, that meant the cost was £5,300. So that's the deposit and the stamp duty accounted for. They make up the majority of the costs of most property purchases, but there are more. The next one on our list for this purchase are solicitor's fees, which came to £2,493. And it's worth breaking that number down a bit because that's not all funds that are going straight to your solicitor for them to keep. In fact, the fee that the solicitor charged on this purchase was £1,170 and that was the cost of them acting for the buyer and also acting for the mortgage lender. Often you can get the same solicitor to act for both and that ends up being more cost efficient. But on top of that there are a whole range of other transaction costs that the solicitor ends up passing on. So there's the searches which are basically the checks that they make with the local authority to make sure that everything is as it should be with the property. There's the local search, the environmental search and the drainage search each of which come at a price. There are land registry fees, there are fees that need to be paid to the freeholder because this is a leasehold purchase and there are also costs in there that aren't so much fees but rather advance payments called apportionments so because this is a leasehold property there's ground rent and service charge to pay because the seller had paid these ahead of time into the future they need to be reimbursed for anything they've paid for the date of completion forward so those apportionments for ground rent and serve charge end up being paid by the buyer so the amount being paid to the solicitor in this case started with a quote of £1,170 but after all those fees and those apportionments ended up being £2,193.14. Now you probably think that's more than enough in terms of legal fees, but you're not quite done if you buy through a limited company. Because many property investors do now, for tax reasons, buy through a limited company. But if you do, most lenders will want you to take some independent legal advice, or sometimes referred to as ILA, to make sure you understand the mortgage product that you're entering into. And the cost for that is another £300. And because there was a mortgage on this property, a mortgage broker was used to find the best deal possible, and that was another £250. Now, you don't have to use a mortgage broker, and some mortgage brokers will not charge a fee at all. But generally, the old adage, you get what you pay for, applies here, and a good mortgage broker will normally want paying for their work and not just rely on the fees they'll make from the product. So you need to account for that as well. So all in all, on completion, the amount needed to acquire this property was £47,043. That's a lot of money going out, but fortunately, there's some money coming back in as well. The purpose of buying this property, as well as benefiting from its value growing over time is to make some income from it each month and in this case the rental income projected for this purchase is 850 pounds now of course there are costs to come off that figure as well so as we've already noted this investor used a mortgage that mortgage product comes with an annual interest rate of 3.63 percent and that's on an interest only basis which is pretty typical for buy to let purchases given how interest rates are at the moment that could be considered a little bit high but remember this is a limited company purchase and rates for limited companies tend to be high so at an annual interest rate of 3.63%, the monthly cost of that mortgage, the interest payment is £361. Now, as this is an apartment, there are other costs that you need to take into consideration. There is a service charge. A service charge is the amount charged to you, the owner, by the person who owns the freehold, by the management company who look after the block. So that tends to be things like communal areas and any additional services like concierge. The amount charged here per month is £157.32. There'll also be ground rent. 
and the ground rent is the amount paid to the freeholder. And that works out to be £16.60. And, and your final cost in this example is your rental management. So this property is managed by a letting agent. Our investor doesn't live anywhere near this property, so it would be a nightmare for them to manage. So the amount this letting agent is charging is 10% of the rent. So that's £85 per month. So where does this leave our investor? Well, we've got that rental income of £850. We're taking off the cost of the mortgage, the service charge, the ground rent and the management. And that leaves him with a net income of £230 per month. Now, of course, some of those costs may change. The grand rent and the management fee can go up or down. The rent may go up and down. There may be periods where the property is empty and there may be repairs that need to be taken care of. None of that is factored into these high level numbers and investors differ in terms of how much detail they like to get into, whether they do put in an allowance for things like repairs or whether they just save up the cash flow they get so they know that that money is there if they need it. In this case, we're just gonna look at these top level numbers, which leaves us with a cash flow of 230 pounds, which of course is 2,760 pounds per year. Now we've got all the numbers we need to calculate the overall return on investment. So we take that £2,760 and divide it by the total amount of cash that our investor put into the transaction, which was £47,043. That gets you to a total return on investment of 5.87% per year. So while that may seem like a lot to take in and there are so many different costs to consider, it's actually quite s simple. And once you've assessed the deal a few times over, you'll be able to work out your return quite quickly and the costs involved of purchasing. But to make your life even easier, we've created a free spreadsheet that you can download and use straight away to start plugging in the numbers of your own deals. There's a link to that in the description below. So there you go, the real numbers behind a real deal. Hopefully that's now given you a bit more knowledge and the confidence to put that into action. Maybe even with your very first buy to let. And if you want to do that, well then you better check out this video. It's the steps you need to take on your first buy to let with a checklist you can follow. Make sure you watch that next and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any videos like this.